everyone, Sir Owen Disney here. It is officially 11.21 p.m. on Monday evening, but this is your Tuesday video where we're going to be recapping WWE Monday Night Raw from last night, a.k.a. a few minutes ago. So, got a little bit of housekeeping to get out of the way before I get started. It is officially eight days as of this very moment, and I will be heading home sweet home to Orlando, Florida yet again for an amazing 12-day excursion. I'm very excited. I'm going to be at all the Disney parks. I will be at both Universal Parks, and I will be at SeaWorld as well. There's going to be a lot of really awesome filming that I'm going to be doing at Reunion 2013. That's going to be great. That starts on next Thursday. And on Wednesday, December 4th, I'm actually going to be going to the Sci-Fi, because that's what I do on my first day anytime. And I'm going to be having lunch this time instead of dinner. And then after the sci-fi, I'm going to hang out at the studios for a bit and then head over to Downtown Disney where I will be in attendance for a special sneak preview of Saving Mr. Banks that does not come out uh, wide until December 20th. So that's going to be really exciting. Let's talk about the schedule, shall we? And I want to make sure that I've got the schedule in front of me because if not, I look like a fool. And I don't want to look like a fool here. Now, I'm drinking... No, it's not some cola form of Crystal Light you guys have never seen before. That'd be awesome. Crystal Light, get on that. Get on a cola flavor. No, it is something that I don't drink fairly often, and that is root beer. Yes, I'm having me a good old-fashioned sarsaparilla right now, to be totally honest. Why am I having a sarsaparilla right now? I'm sure Tinkerbell wants to know, because she just tried to sing to me with her siren song. But no, why am I having a root beer? Because... My sarsaparilla is frozen, but not intended for Wednesday. Why is it frozen? Because I'm very excited to be able to go back to Picos Bills at Frontierland of the Magic Kingdom and have myself another nice little uh, snack of french fries and a frozen root beer, and it's going to be awesome, and that's going to be next week. I'm looking forward to that. One of many frozen drinks I will have, regardless of the elements, regardless how cold it is, when I go back home next week. Now, I want to talk about the pop schedule real quick before I go any further. Okay. So, before we go into anything else, I want to talk about my personal schedule before I go into the pop schedule. So, we'll talk about the pop schedule in a second. And I want to thank each and every one of you out there that have liked us on Facebook so far. And for those of you that have not liked us on Facebook, go right ahead. I will tell you, of course, at the end of the video, because that's how it works. That's my outro. It's how I've always done this, because I've added that. I've done the Zack Ryder thing. But I will tell you right off the top, if you want to add us on Facebook, you want to follow Pop on Facebook, you're more than welcome to. It is www.facebook.com backslash Sir Owen Disney Pop. One word, Sir Owen Disney Pop. So uh, you can check that out. And for everyone that liked us, thank you very much. And continue liking us. Spread the word about Pop and the Popcaster Revolution. And like I said, I've got my Pop business cards, which are completely done. They look amazing. And I will be showing you guys those when I am at Reunion. And I will be giving a lot of you that are watching this video said business cards at Reunion. It's all about the networking, folks. So I do want to say something real quick that... Here's the schedule for this week. Now, I'm shooting this late. Obviously, it's not even 11.30 yet. It's about 5 till. And the reason why I'm shooting this late is because I have to work at 11 o'clock in the morning. And I don't want to try to shoot a video when I'm, like, half asleep and my eyes are still tired. I'm still sleepy. I've got the 500 o'clock shadow. No. I want to be as wide awake and alert as possible. So that's why I'm shooting this video right after Raw. And... I'm not going to have time in the morning to shoot you out a video, so I wanted to be able to shoot the video, get it out to you guys before I go to work. So everything's good good to go. Now, I work tomorrow, as in Tuesday, as in this video is supposed to be, and Tuesday will bring me a shift 11 to 6. Well, after this shift, I'm going to be heading over to Long John Silver's, make our long, long-awaited return to Long John Silver's, 
And why? Because it is time for the Film Independent Spirit Awards nominations. Those will go out tomorrow, and we are going to be discussing them. Now, there will probably be some sort of video in the near future, maybe if we can get everything worked out, talking about the Independent Spirit Awards nominations and uh, our opinions on everything, but not quite yet. We're still trying to work those out. Cross the T's and dot the uh, lowercase j's, if you will. So, what happens after that? We're going to go back to Regal and we're going to watch Homefront. Yeah, the new Jason Statham and, mm, excuse me, James Franco film that comes out tomorrow at 8 o'clock. And I'll come back here. And then on Wednesday, I don't work, so I'm going to shoot you guys out a video early about TNA Turning Point's free preview that was on Impact last Thursday night. And then we're going to Frozen and the Book Thief flip the order, so Book Thief, then, thro then Frozen. And then I'll come back here, and on Thursday is Thanksgiving. And what am I doing on Thanksgiving? I'm working 8 to 6 and making almost $13 an hour. So that is awesome. So, I'll make over $100 that day, and that's going to be glorious. And then after I get off work at 6 o'clock, I'll come back here, have me some dinner, and what am I going to do? I'm going to watch the Thanksgiving edition of TNA Impact and recap it for you guys, just so I can have the video out before midnight, if I'm able to. I can't guarantee it's going to be before midnight, but I at least can guarantee it to be before I go to sleep that day. There you go. And on Friday, this is going to be huge. Friday on the channel, you're going to get the brand new AJ's Movie Reviews talking about Homeland, Frozen, and The Book Thief. And <clears throat> Saturday, we're going to be uh, showcasing our November installment of the Big 8 Academy Awards prediction videos, where AJ and I will discuss the Big 8 categories of the Oscars like we have the last several months and to decide what our predictions are going into the month of December when all the major candidates will be coming out, like the stuff like Dallas Buyers Club and Inside Lewin Davis and Saving Mr. Banks and American Hustle, The Secret World of Walter Mitty, if you believe what everyone else is saying. And those movies will lead us into December, but we're going to talk about our November predictions. And I know AJ's have changed quite a bit, and mine, once I finally make my final decision, they will probably change quite a bit as well. This Sunday will be our first Oscar-themed verses from December. That's right, we're going to do five Oscar-themed verses in December, four in January. Our first Oscar-themed verses cryptic comment is Underdog. So yes, we're going to be doing our first verses on this coming Sunday, December 1st. Now, full disclosure, obviously everyone knows I'm going home, to home sweet home to Orlando, Florida in eight days and going to hang out with my friends at Reunion, going to hang out with my friends Tim and Jen, and hang out with everyone in the parks and go to all the parks and enjoy all the Christmas decorations, all the Christmas shows, all the Christmas gatherings, all the Christmas get-togethers, and all the Christmas celebrations at all the parks in Orlando, except for Legoland, because I haven't got a chance to work that out yet. I'll work it out eventually. So, SeaWorld Universal and Walt Disney World will all be visited by yours truly, and I will have video from all of the above, and that will be taken care of. But because of that, AJ has been kind enough to take his entire day on Friday and make it into a monumental filming day. That's right. In addition to those videos, you guys, on December 6th, yes, December 6th and December 13th, AJ's Movie Reviews will return to limited release movies. So, three movies on the 6th, three movies on the 13th, and... No fear, we're also going to be filming out two verses that are going to be on the 8th and on the 15th. And then, of course, I return on the 16th. The 17th, we're watching movies. And the 18th is American Hustle. The 20th is Saving Mr. Banks and Anchorman and a lot of stuff. We're talking about The Hobbit and all sorts of other things under the sun. If we're going to get blue is the warmest color, if it's still in Athens by then. And who knows, Dallas Buyers Club, Nebraska, Inside Lewin Davis. This is all things that we could get. Old boy, out of the furnace. These are all possibilities of things that could be on any of these videos. But I promise you right now, one way or another, the review, the long way review of Escape from Tomorrow will finally be on one of these videos. Since I'm going to be watching Saving Mr. Banks on the 4th, makes perfect sense that movie gets reviewed on the 6th. But I'll check with AJ to make sure that works out. So, that is the pop schedule, and of course, every single day when I'm home, you're going to get video from Reunion, you're going to get video from Disney, Universal, SeaWorld, all points in between, you're going to get videos 
co-starring people. I'm going to have special guests, just like I did last time. We're going to be touring the Osborne Lights, just like we did last time. And I'll have better footage than I did last time. Mark my words. But. As I finish this Frozen Lemonade, which is no longer frozen, let's talk Monday Night Raw. So, yay, Goody Gumdrops, Randy Orton comes out. And Steph and Triple H come out with him. Oh, goody. At least we'll get this out of the way quickly, right? He says he's the best. He says no one can take that away from him. And just like I wrote in these notes, cue John Cena. So Cena comes out, and Cena basically panders to the crowd and says, everyone's sick of what's best for business. <laughs> that's a shoot more ways than one. And that's the reason why they chant Daniel Bryan's name, or why they chant yes all the time. Then, of course, he has to... Uh, redirect it back to himself and said, you know what, there should only be one champion. Because there's only one world, there should be only one world champion. I know someone said that a long time ago. John Cena makes a challenge for a title versus title match in three weeks at TLC, which I will not be recapping for this channel because I'll be home. They're going to put both belts high above the ring and there will be a title versus title match. TLC rules. Okay. Um... For those of you that think that there's going to be someone walking out with both belts, again, don't think that. That's not smart. As a matter of fact, if you believe that one man is going to walk out with both championships at TLC, then I think you might want to uh, seriously take all of your assets, liquidate them completely, and just give them, donate them to the homeless. Because, and you should donate them to the homeless, honestly. Because, I mean, come on. You don't need to have money anymore. Because if you're that stupid to think that one man is going to take both championships, then you don't realize what we've got right now. What we've got right now is really, really bad booking from WWE Creative. I do not like this at all right now. Title Unification match was fine. Everyone was really up for it when it was supposed to be Punk and Brian. Well, that's not going to happen now, so it's going to be Cena and Orton. Yeah. Goody gumdrops, like I say all the time now, apparently. So, what's going to happen? What do I think is going to happen? Three things could happen. Number one, there's a screwed job. Nobody wins somehow, some way that happens. Number two, they flip the championship. Cena takes the WWE title. Orton takes the world title. The third one is somehow, some way, one of them just gets injured and they don't do the match. So, <laughs> obviously, that third stat is not going to happen, but yeah, who knows? I think they flip the championships, to be honest. I think Cena takes the WWE title back and Orton takes the world title back. Everything is good in the world, and then they go back to the respective challengers after the Royal Rumble. So, sure. We open the show off with another uh, slight rematch from Survivor Series. This time it's the Shield in six-man tag team action against Cody Rhodes, Goldust, and Rey Mysterio Jr. So, um, no real Americans on this show, so no Cesaro swing tonight. That was interesting. So, there's a double whip and a double DDT by Goldust on Ambrose and Roman Reigns. Tag into Seth Rollins. Rollins comes in, smartly knocks Cody off the ring apron, just like he does Survivor Series. Nails him with a big back body drop. Satellite head scissors take over. Seated senton as Mysterio gets tagged in. And he goes for the over-the-shoulder power slam. Counter to the 619. Seth Rollins comes off the ropes. And they connect with the double. Both go down with a double cross body. Hot tag to Cody. Tag into Ambrose. Missile drop kick. Whip in reverse. Tip up sunset flip. One, two, and a kick out. Drop down uppercut. And the Alabama slam. Reigns makes the save. So they low bridge Roman Reigns to move the top rope to the floor. He goes for the 619. It gets stopped with a huge spear. Breaks Mysterio in half. Gold dust off the rope. Stucks the clothesline. Gets caught with a big spear. Cody drop kicks Roman out of the ring. Stopping his reign of terror. Or reigns of terror to make a pun. Which I absolutely hate. He goes for beautiful disaster. And that knocks him to the floor. Crossroads is countered into the Justice's Surf from behind by Ambrose. And 1-2-3. Um, Fast-paced match to start off the show. Uh, I have no qualms with this match. Once again, still trying to make Roman Reigns into be the standout of the Shield. Uh, what's this with Ambrose still have the U.S. title and not defending it? I think they need to remedy that soon. If they don't give him a challenger for TLC, I'm going to be really upset, to be honest, because I really think he needs to drop the title if he's just going to have it over his shoulder. 
it's kind of, as bad as it is to say, it's kind of like how Curtis Axel with the Intercontinental title. Really didn't defend it very often. When he defended it, he finally lost it, so, who knows. Okay. Our comedy segment of the evening is Miz TV. Miz, of course, promoting his new ABC Family uh, show, seven movie, 7 o'clock tomorrow night, called Christmas Bounty. Yeah, okay. I'm a Miz fan. I'm like, yeah, okay. And Miz's special guest is supposed to be uh, Michael Strahan, who apparently used to play football, and he was, he's on, he's Regis Philbin's, like, um, replacement now, I guess, on live. Well, he calls out Michael Strahan, and Titus O'Neil comes out with a gap between his teeth, mocking Michael Strahan. I don't know why this is funny, but it looks funny. I don't know anything about this guy or who he is. So, apparently the real Strahan comes out, and he says the WWE is about fun. Yeah, unless it comes to booking. So, he says there's going to be, and I quote, a double team tag team main event. Yes, not only Jeremy Piven makes a bad mistake, Michael Strahan makes one as well. So, we're going to get ourselves a double team tag team main event, which means the loser has to fight Dennis Rodman inside a steel cage. Because it's double team, so it makes sense, right? Summer Festival looks so bad now, does it? It's going to be uh, uh, Randy Orton, Alberto Del Rio, and John Cena and the Big Show. Like I really needed another thing to hate about this show. So, Miz basically thinks that Strahan can't take a basic move, so he throws out a hip toss. So, Miz goes for a hip toss, Strahan blocks it. Titus goes for a hip toss, Strahan blocks it. And Michael Strahan ends up hip-tossing The Miz. And he does the millions of dollars with uh, Titus and hip-toss Titus anyway. Miz stands up, shakes his hand, and uh, they all raise their arms in the air. And that's our segment. Yeah, okay, that adds some place on the show. I hate the guest host unless it works. Most of the time, it doesn't work. Um, I know I said Curtis Axel wasn't going anywhere after this mat after the match at Survivor Series last night, but you know, they had to throw one more uh, wrench in my plans. Curtis Axel and Ryback in tag team action against Biggie Langston and Mark Henry. So I think right now there's a lot of direction you can go with this. You want to make these two team up on a regular basis? That would be awesome because. We could do the Nation of Domination again, if you really want to. I like this idea. Um, Scott Dawson of NXT actually tweeted, Doom. Why not? Why don't we turn Biggie Langston and Mark Henry into the new Doom? And then give them Ron Simmons as their mouthpiece. I think that actually could work. The problem is, the only thing Ron Simmons would say is, Damn! And that would be the end of it. So, yeah, I don't know if I'd work or not. It sounded good in my head, sorry. So, anyway, we get to the match. Uh, Ryback Spinebusters Biggie Langston hits the big splash. One count only. Military Press tosses him to the canvas. One count only. Tag into Axel. Axel comes in. They work him over. Tag back into Ryback and the chin lock. And, of course, he punches his way out. Comes off the ropes and belly-to-belly -belly suplex on Ryback. Tag into Mark Henry, tag into Curtis Axel, and Axel gets nailed with the JYD headbutt. Michael Cole, you obviously were watching last week's uh, last night's uh, video because you called it the same thing I did. I know it's I know it's just probably coincidence. But Michael Cole, thank you for your pop patronage. So an over the shoulder power slam, Biggie clotheslines right back over the top rope. World's strongest slam with Curtis Axel. One, two, three. There's basically just a big time squash to uh, get this new group a new team over, if they're going to remain a team or not, or if eventually they're going to feud, and that would be awesome. I remember we were talking about doing this back at SummerSlam, and now this finally might happen eventually when Mark Henry goes back to being a heel somewhere down the line. Unless you keep him as a babyface, I'm not quite sure if that's going to happen or not. So, I learned my lesson on this next match. I found out it was going to be a rematch from the 7-on-7 seven -seven Divas Elimination Tag at Survivor Series. So, instead of writing out the match, which took me almost a page and a half, because, because, <laughs> seven eliminations takes a while, I just wrote down finishes. So, this is what happens, folks. So, Oksana gets nailed with a Bella Factor by Brie. Gone. Double Trouble on Rosa by Nikki. 
gone. Tamina super kicks Naomi, gone. Tamina Samoan drops Cameron, gone. So Natty with a discus lariat and a snap suplex and a scoop slam on Tamina and tags Jojo in, Jojo makes the pin, gone. Jojo gets caught with a Total World Backbreaker by the person you don't want doing it on the team, Alicia Fox. Gone. Well, she would have been gone, but Eva Marie gets tagged in and she sits down on a very awkward sunset flip, gets the pin. Alicia Fox. Gone. Gutbuster countered, double leg sharpshooter, Caitlyn's gone. AJ rolls up Natty with the tights, Natty's gone. Brie hits a Bella Factor on AJ. AJ's gone. Who's left? Summer Rae. So you have a great opportunity to build Summer Rae up in the fans' eyes as someone that can go. What has happened? She dances around the ring, gets caught in the torture rack backbreaker, and by Nikki, and that's the end. So yeah, uh, a little bit better than their match on Sunday, that's for damn sure. Um, not good. But not as bad as it could have been. Uh, JoJo is better than Eva Marie, even though Eva Marie is a natural heel, and her heel her heel charisma may bring her far in WWE. Okay, so um, apparently this is a uh, this is the night we're gonna put Damian Sandow and Dolph Ziggler into another gimmick match. So you, if you fans of the WWE app, can vote for three different stipulations. You can vote for a Long Island Lumberjack match. And of course, the Lumberjacks are Scott Stanford and the Big O and Zack Ryder and Chi, of course. So, uh, that's how it works. But no, uh, that didn't happen. Or you could vote for a Strong Island Street Fight. That would have made sense. That's what Dolph wanted you to pick. But oh no, there was one last stipulation, the Hamptons Hardcore Match. And there was like buoys and oars and tennis rackets, tennis balls. Because you know what you do in the Hamptons, you play tennis, you play golf, you do yachting. So yeah, that's what got chosen and uh, yet another um, interesting match. Ziggler comes out wearing a new, uh, new York Islanders a hockey jersey. And when it's ripped off, he's wearing a Zack Ryder t-shirt. That's awesome. Props to Dolph for doing that. <coughs> of course, Sandow takes it off and he's wearing his orange um, tank top. So, there you go. So, there's a can of garbage that's actually in the ring. And at one point, he gets dumped out. And Sandow gets planted with a reverse snack breaker on the garbage. So, Sandow gets up and he's like, ah, I ain't doing this anymore. We're not playing around. So, five knee strikes. Scoop slam. Drapes the Islanders jersey over the face. And nails the Kobito Aki at the elbow of disdain. So, Dolph ends up going to the floor. He slides under the ring, and of course you know what's going to happen. You've seen WWE hardcore matches before. What happens when you, someone goes under the ring? When they get pulled out, their opponent gets blasted with a fire extinguisher, and that's exactly what happens. So, you get back in the ring, dives on the middle rope, 10 punch, and spinning neck breaker. He gets the oar. And he nails the name dropper, 1-2, Sandow kicks out. So Sandow takes the garbage can, slamming him right in the face, slides a chair in the ring, tosses him back in, gets a tennis racket, gets caught with the exclamation point DDT, and that's right on the steel chair, 1-2, Sandow kicks out. So he goes to the big splash in the corner, he misses, Sandow breaks the oar over the back of Ziggler and nails him with your welcome on the garbage can, reducing it to nothingness. 1-2-3, Sandow wins. So Dolph won. And Sandow now won, so we got to have another one. So wait to see what stipulation matches gets thrown out. Um, I right, Sandow and Ziggler are better than this. I really think so. It got the crowd somewhat into it. I like the Zack Ryder T-shirt. That was a nice shout out since we were in Long Island. Um, I will say right now that it's probably these are two interesting matches they've had. But I'd rather see a more solid feud where there's more, like, distinct wrestling matches between the two. They both can bump, obviously. But I don't necessarily want to see hardcore matches between the two. I would say... Here's what I would do. This is exactly the great idea to do. Put Dolph over on Ambrose and let these two feud over the U.S. title. That's a great idea. Because you're not doing anything with them right now. 
Certainly you're not doing anything with the U.S. Championship, so why the hell not? Why don't you just take the title off Ambrose and do that match? With Dolph and Sandow, make it mean something, put the U.S. title on the line. Makes sense to me. So, Santino's talking to Michael Strahan. Eric Rowan shows up. Gives Strahan the sheep mask. He puts it on. They have a stare down. And that's about it. So, Brian and Punk come out. Punk makes a bunch of name drops. Name drops the Bushwhackers and IRS, which is hilarious given the fact that Bray Wyatt's in this match. He talks about the Rock and Roll Express, and then he brings in the Ring Crew Express. A nice shout out to Dunn and Marcos right there. Nice Ring of Honor uh, shout out right there. And then he talks about Matt Classic and Colt Cabana and Scott Colton, which of course is Colt's shoot name. So, yeah, interesting. This starts this next match, handicapped match, of course. Punk and Brian against the Wyatt family. Uh, this was fun. <clears throat> this was actually um, easily the best match on the show, without any question. So, whip in reverse, and Rowan nails Brian with a back elbow. Tagging to Luke Harper, whip in, backflip, lands on his feet, ducks the clothesline, comes off the ropes, hooking clothesline. Tagging to Punk, Punk whips him in, charges up, gets the boot. Three big shoulders tagging to Brian, and they're working a Rowan over at this. Ew, excuse me, working Harper over at this point. So dragon screw leg whip on Harper and European uppercut three separate times. Harper with another one of his own just drops Brian, and then when he gets up, he nails him with one of his own and tagging to Bray headbutt and a falling headbutt. Tag back into Rowan, can't really use Bray too much in this match because you want to build, you want to build him, you want to build him, so obviously you don't have him work as much as he can in this match. So, mm, excuse me, Rowan with a scoop slam and a headbutt, whip in, charges up, boot in the corner, misses, and tag into Punk, springboard clothesline, clothesline comes off the ropes, Twice and ducks the clothesline and high leg lariat by Punk and the running knee against the ropes instead of against the corner for a change. Tope sends him into the barricade, tosses him back in, spinning neck breaker, goes up top to the savage elbow. One, two, Rowan kicks out. So Rowan tosses Punk to the floor. Then we come back to live action from commercial. There's a chin lock with a knee firmly planted in the lower back and Punk elbows his way out, tagging to Bray Wyatt. Three falling headbutts, scoop slam, one count only, Punk kicks out. So tagging a Harper, Gator roll three times, rolling into the side headlock, and of course Punk punches his way out. European uppercut, stuns Punk, and tagging a Rowan, whip into Rowan's bear hug, and Rowan tosses him from side to side. Three elbows right to the temple, and that goes for a sunset flip, double goozle, Rowan picks him up, and... Punk plants him with a high kick to the side of the head. Tagging to Harper. Hot tag to Brian. So he smartly drop kicks Bray Wyatt right off the ring apron immediately. Whip in, reverse. Ducks the clothesline. Tope on Bray. So Bray Wyatt gets knocked into the barricade. He goes up top. Missile drop kick on Luke Harper. And then there's the yes kicks. And he goes for the buzzsaw into the most likely set out power bomb, But he gets countered. This time, Hurricane Rana from Brian. And then he goes for the yes lock. Rowan with an axe handle makes a save. Charges in, and he gets dropped toe hold to the middle turnbuckle. The charging drop kick in the corner, and then he runs the opposite corner, hits the other one, and he charges in on Harper, and Harper catches him with the Michinoku driver. Punk makes a save right before the three count is administered. So they mug Punk, and then Brian, and then the referee just, like, throws it out completely, calling for the bell and the disqualification. Bad camera angle. Punk gets nailed with a discus lariat. And it's funny because it's missed completely by the camera. Rowan and Harper carry Brian to the back. Interesting. Punk goes to try to save Brian, and he walks right into a spear from Roman Reigns. So the Shields stand over Punk. They pick him up, toss him back in the rings, triple powerbomb, and lay Punk out. So there's a lot of questions on this match, as I rub my nose in front of everyone. Match was great. More build to TLC. Daniel Bryan following the buzzards could happen. Maybe we. I've been. I have been talking about Bryan joining the Wyatt family for the longest time. Maybe it'll happen. Not necessarily the way I wanted it to happen, but maybe it'll happen somehow, some way. And who knows where Bryan's going to be headspace wise when he comes back from being in the uh, clutches of the Wyatt family. 
What's going on with the shield going after Punk? So, I mean, there's a lot of questions to be answered, and I'm pretty sure we have not seen the last of any of this. <clears throat> of course, we get another rematch from uh, Survivor Series, The Miz against Kofi Kingston. Uh, okay, a little TV match. Shinlock, uh, elbow out by Kofi, and a knee lift. Backdrop, lands on his feet, and goes for a charge. He misses, and then there's the double chop, and then the drop kick, and the leaping clothesline. The boom drop, goes for trouble in paradise. Catches the foot, goes for the figure four, gets kicked off, goes for the SOS, one, two, and Miz kicks out. Pushes him off to the corner, and he hits that backflip into a kick that he does in the corner. Springboard, flying body press, one, two, and Miz kicks out. Miz ends up rolling him up crucifix style, one, two, three, and gets a clean victory over Kofi Kingston. So this feud does continue. Okay, match. So Xavier Woods is end up introduced by R-Truth with the Funkadactyls using Brodus Clay's entrance theme. Uh, something tells me somebody's days are numbered. So Xavier Woods ends up coming in and he's facing off against one member of three-man band, Heath Slater. Not doing a gimmick tonight, he's just Heath Slater. So Woods nails him with a satellite, head scissors takeover, whip in reverse, tip up into a catch on the shoulders, and Slater nails him with the snake eyes. Locks on chin lock. Xavier Woods punches his way out. Comes off the ropes and nails a standing side kick one count only. He goes for a charge. It misses and a front drop kick sends him into the corner. Nails the honor roll and then lost in the woods. One, two, three. Big win for Xavier Woods in his uh, in-ring singles match debut in WWE. So, yeah. <clears throat> okay, for what it was. Uh, for those of you that have not seen Xavier Woods in NXT, you guys are in for a treat because this guy can go. And he does the uh, Brodus Clay entrance a lot better than Brodus ever did. No offense, they need to make Brodus into a heel monster. And again, we don't have enough of those right now, do we? So, yeah, that would be your semi-main. This wonderful monstrosity is your main. Orton and Del Rio against Cena and Big Show. Okay, I'll bite. Midway through the match, DDT to the leg on Cena by Del Rio. Ties him up to the Tree of Woe after crotching him on the top rope backwards. He goes for the spear just like he did Survivor Series. Just like a Survivor Series, Cena like, pulls himself up. And he gets nailed with a step up in. Zagiri knocks him off the top rope. Del Rio makes the cover 1 2 and a kick out. Tagging to Orton. St. Louis uppercut. And he makes the cover 1 2 and again he kicks out. So a chin lock and Cena counters it with a backdrop suplex. Tagging to Del Rio. And immediately Cena goes to the AA, gets countered into a DDT 1 2 and Cena kicks out. So Del Rio slide, of course, misses because he never hits it. And Orton helps him up, tagging to the big show, tosses him into the ring, clothesline, clothesline, whip in, high elevation, back body drop, he misses the charge, and show gets drop kicked in the knee, GSK, and show collapses. Tagging to Orton, repeated stomps to the head, tagging to Del Rio, GSK, one, two, and show kicks out. Front drop kick right to the temple, tag Orton, knee drop, one, two, and again, show kicks out. Chin lock. Doctor gets in the ring to try to stop the match momentarily, check on the Big Show, make sure he's uh, able to continue. So Orton basically goes to work and DDTs the Big Show, goes for the punt, ends up getting stopped by the harpoon. Tagging to Cena, duck the clothesline, shoulder block, shoulder block, protobomb, goes for the five knuckle shuffle. When he goes for the You Can't See Me, he gets kicked right in the face and gets stopped with the tilt -a whirl backbreaker one, two, and a kick out. Goes for the cross arm breaker again. Fans are chanting C with Del Rio at this point. Counter to the STF, just like a Survivor Series, and that's the end this time around. So Del Rio nails Cena from behind, and the cross arm breaker turned into the AA, and when Cena gets up to his feet, Orton mows him over with the WWE Championship. He gets the world title from Justin Roberts, and of course, he raises both championships above Cena's head as we end the show. Yay. Um, don't care. Do not care. Don't want to see this match. So, yeah. That was Raw. Yeah. I don't know what year it is. Is 2006 all over again? Pretty sure it is. So, uh, yeah, whatevs. Um, could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot better. Um, on par with Survivor Series. Not, not really the greatest show. If you're doing any watching of the show, check out the opening six-man tag. Check out the... Bray, well, long day. Check out the Wyatt family against Daniel Bryan and CM Punk and just 
skip the rest of the show. There's no point to watching any of it. Uh, if you want to see a really good squash, Biggie Langston and uh, Mark Henry, the new Doom against uh, Ryback and Curtis Axel. Nice little squash there. And it's always nice to see Summer Rae, especially Summer Rae in a skirt. Anyway, uh, eventually she'll get to show her wrestling prowess, which we all know she has. Uh, wrestling fans, we will try to gain... On Wednesday, uh, Impact, we'll talk Impact, we'll talk uh, the free preview of Turning Point on Wednesday. Thursday, we're going to talk about the Thanksgiving edition of TNA Impact. And on Saturday, we will be doing NXT and SmackDown one last time before I go home. Of course, we're going to be talking about the big number one contendership match to Bo Dallas's NXT Championship. It's Adrian Neville versus Sami Zayn. That's next week, and that's going to be something I'm going to be talking about. And, of course, the thanks to the edition of SmackDown. So, in the meantime, if you like these videos, tell your friends about them. Leave a comment. Do subscribe. and help spread the word about POP. There's four ways you can get a hold of us and show us how much you love us. You can follow us on Twitter, at Sir Owen Disney. Like us on Facebook at Suro and Disney Pop. You can go ahead and friend us on Facebook at Owen Disney, or you can send your comments, queries, and opinions and criticisms of any kind to Suro and Disney at gmail.com. In the meantime, thank you guys and girls out there for watching, and uh, until tomorrow, boys and girls, that's all I gotta say about that. <laughs>